city slowly starting to show signs of coming back to life. More vaccines are available. Venues start to reopen nearly one year after COVID brought everything to just a screeching halt. Yeah, reopening is just the first step in this recovery. The pandemic crippled the city's economy. So joining us this morning with his plan on how to help get New Yorkers back on their feet is public advocate Jumani Williams. Good morning. So good to see you. Good morning. Good morning. Peace and blessings, everybody. How are you? Absolutely. We're doing well. Uh, so your roadmap to recovery really highlights several key areas that require special attention for the long term. So let's talk about these three areas. What are you wanting to see? Well, first of all, we want the, 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 the presentation is based on uh, the New Deal 90 years ago that helped us get out of a very tough situation we're in. Uh, we're calling this one a renewed deal uh, because we want to go back and continue what was put forth there, but make it a little better. Uh, it was based then on investment, uh, not austerity. And I think that's mm. what's important. And that's what we're going to talk about all day tomorrow. My speech is going to be at 6 p.m. But we have to focus on issues like public safety, infrastructure, environment, housing. But we have to invest in them in a way uh, that is away from the austerity cuts that we're, we're, that we're hearing right now, because that's not what worked in the past. Right. And also those mom and pop shops, right? The mom and pop shops that really are the fundamental basis for so many communities. They really were hurting so many shut down during the pandemic. What measures are you calling for then to be put in place to protect those mom and pop shops? One, like you mentioned, we have to identify them. We have to identify the mom and pop, the small businesses. Uh, we want to make sure they uh, they have uh, extended ability to uh, lease and stay in those places that many people get kicked out of. But also, there are tax breaks that we give uh, to the mammoth organizations for job creation, but never extend that to the mom and pops. And so that's yeah. one place right there uh, where we can just extend the same job creation uh, tax benefits to those mom and pops because they're the people most likely to hire folks from the community anyway. Mm, absolutely. Yeah, so the pandemic really revealed some serious inequities, though, in education and health. I want to talk about this because your plan really targets those areas, especially when it comes to families dealing with economic hardship. Explain to us what you have in mind. Well, we have to remember that the uh, the New Deal previously really dealt, I think if people think about it, uh, infrastructure and jobs. Uh, there was, however, unfortunately, some inequity even in the New Deal. So we want to make sure we reverse that. We have to get to the issues that were around even before the pandemic. And so we don't want to go back to normal because it didn't work for so many people. We want to get to a new normal. And so when we invest in infrastructure, when we invest in creating opportunity and jobs and expanding the ones that we have, we do want to target it and focus it on the communities that were most hard hit. Mm. Make sure there's equity uh, in the uh, opportunities that are going to be uh, presented by this investment. And it's important to mention, uh, because I know a lot of folks want to push forward and thinking that we have to go to austerity and uh, conservatism, but it's really investment and progressivism that got us out of the last problem we were in during the Depression. Yeah, and this is going to certainly be a long roadmap to recovery indeed. So I'm looking forward to what you have to say about that tomorrow. But I do want to get you while we have you to weigh in on some other issues impacting New York New Yorkers right now, if you don't mind. Uh, so coming up in just about an hour, I'm going to one on one with the police commissioner. I want to get your thoughts about the changes in leadership at the NYPD. Well, you know, change change is always good. I do see uh, some uh, diversity in um, the changes that we see in leadership. Uh, to perhaps give some more people some opportunities to rise up. Uh, but we want to make sure that we're also uh, really beginning to redefine what public safety is. And so the changes without that redefining uh, is going to be difficult to get to where we want to go to. I do want to give credit to the police commissioner for a speech he made last week yeah. uh, where there had been resistance previously really acknowledging the issues of race, the issues of disparate policing that uh, has been a part of the NYPD for so long. Uh, that was important because it was hard. It's hard to deal with an issue that would not be named. And so I do want to make sure I give uh, credit on that point. Well, how do you redefine, though, when you, you look at this past history? What is your plan and how are you going to push for for that, you know, redefining the lines here? Well, I would invite everybody one to uh, go to our see our speech tomorrow at 6 p.m. You can go to advocate.nyc.gov. It's a whole day of events, actually. Uh, but it's really us acknowledging uh, what policing has been in many communities and then really asking what is it that keeps a community safe? Mm. All those things funded, all those things resourced. And then what is 
police's role as law enforcement, which of course they do have one. And what we've done for too long, unfortunately, uh, besides the overlays of, of race and other issues is equate public safety with policing. Right. And that causes a lot of problems. And, and there's a lot there's a lot there to unpack. But now is the time. If there was ever a time, the only civil lying from this horror we've gone through in the past year is we can put new systems down yep. that correct issues that have been around for a while. Yeah, and we'll see what, what he has to say about what you're mentioning right now coming up in just about an hour. The other big story, public advocate, several state lawmakers calling on Governor Andrew Cuomo to resign now in the wake of the nursing home scandal, plus on top of that, the allegations of sexual harassment. Let me get your take. Do you think the governor should resign? I'd be glad to see uh, the governor resign. I don't think he should be governor now. I said that before. I think he was the wrong governor for the past year, even before the pandemic. But more importantly, these investigations have to go through uh, because uh, with what we know is correct of who this governor is, obviously sexual harassment is terrible. Uh, but there's so many issues on top of that that deal with the toxic culture of abuse of power for so many years. Uh, that have caused this state to be where it is, even getting us at some point to be the epicenter of the epicenter. And so there are dangers of, of this governor even overseeing a budget right now. This might be the most important budget. It is the most important budget we've seen in decades. But many of, Within, your, many of your Democratic colleagues are saying, let the investigation play out before actually calling for a resignation. You're saying resign. What I'm saying is the investigation has to play out. And right now, the legislative body can begin to strip away powers from this governor so that the toxic abuse of power that we know of this governor that has brought us to the point where we are uh, can no longer have a bearing on a budget that can't use, that, that should not have that toxic uh, abuse of power and retribution that we've seen for so long. I'd love to see him resign. I don't think he should be governor now. Uh, he was the wrong governor. Uh, this investigation, though, is is very important because I think it's going to I know it's going to reveal a lot more than uh, what we've already seen yeah. in so many different categories and areas. Quickly, have you experienced any of that abuse of power that you talk about? Um, you know, I, I have uh, seen and heard uh, what I believe just to be lies. I've, I've, I've heard lies directly to me uh, and that, that, you know, I don't take uh, very lightly. I haven't uh, seen and felt what uh, some of them Ron Kim uh, has done, but I've heard about them. Uh, I've known about them. I've seen how they impact the policies that are made uh, from pay to play uh, to which way is the wind going uh, to everything being about uh, what can make the governor look more powerful. Uh, and everybody, the, the thing is that this is what hasn't been a secret mm -hmm. uh, from journalists to elected officials right. uh, to just people who are pushing back. Everybody has the same story. And so it's remarkable that it even took so long, and it's so sad, of course, uh, that it went into the category that yeah. I don't think people are surprised about with these women, courageous women, uh, coming forward. Understood. Public Advocate Jamani Williams, thank you for your time and your voice this morning. The public welcome to join the Public Advocate State of the People Conference taking place all day Thursday. For more information.